P-P-A-P Told me to spread the truth of mathematics. Let's take a look at the range and the graph of the denominator of this equation. The denominator is a quadratic. We can use negative b over 2a to locate the vertex, which is negative 3 fourths. Solving for y when x equals negative 3 fourths, y is negative 41 over 8. Making a sine graph for the derivative of this equation, we can find that this quadratic is concave up and that x equals negative 3 fourths is a minimum. Thus, the range for the denominator is negative 41 over 8 to infinity. Using the quadratic formula, we can locate the x-intercepts of this graph to be at negative 3 fourths plus minus square root of 41 over 4. Dividing 1 over this quadratic, we expect that when x equals these values, there will be a vertical asymptote where y diverges to positive and negative infinity. Because our denominator will equal 0, we also know that because the denominator's range diverges to infinity, there will be a horizontal asymptote of 0. Finally. Looking at the region between when x equals negative 3 fourths minus square root of 41 over 4 and negative 3 fourths plus square root of 41 over 4 on the graph of the denominator, the y values are negative. Because the vertex is the minima of the denominator's graph, it will be the maxima of the graph of 1 over the denominator because the greater the magnitude of a denominator, the lower the value is. So because it is negative, the magnitude is lower near zero. The y value of the maxima in this region is negative 8 over 41 in the graph of 1 over 2x squared plus 3x minus 4, meaning that the range of this region is negative infinity to negative 8 over 41. Putting this all together, the range of this equation is 0 to infinity union negative infinity to negative 8 over 41. The range of 1 over 2x squared plus 3x minus 4 is the intersection with the unit of 0 to infinity and negative infinity to negative 8 over 41. Sweet! Awesome! I'm healed! Yay! <laughs> Go math! If we set both equations equal to one another, we know that by factoring out an x, that x equals 0 is always the solution. By dividing both sides by x, we get the equations of two different lines being equal to one another. Since we already know that x equals 0 is a solution, what we're looking for are equations with another additional x solution. There are two cases, one where a equals c and one where a is not equal to c. If a is equal to c, then the slopes of the lines are equal. If b equals d and their intercepts are equal, then we know that all x solutions would work since the lines would be identical. The probability of this happening is one-third times one-third, since one-third is the probability of two different variables being equal to one another. The case where b is not equal to d is impossible, since eliminating ax and cx from both sides of the equation produces b equals d, which is a contradiction. Our other case is that a is not equal to c. One subcase is that b is equal to d. If this is the case, then we could eliminate it from both sides of our equation. But then ax equals cx, and therefore a equals c, which is a contradiction. Our other case is that b is not equal to d. Since we already know that a is not equal to c, we know that x can't be 0, because if x was 0, b would equal d, which we know is not the case because b is not equal to d. These two lines have to intersect at some point, so we know that there's a unique x solution that's non-zero. The probability that a is not equal to c and b is not equal to d is two-thirds times two-thirds, since two-thirds is the probability that um, any two variables are not equal to one another. Therefore, we can find our final answer by adding one-ninth to four-ninths, which is five-ninths. subtracting 1 from both sides to obtain the floor of x minus 2 times the absolute value of x equals 1. If x equals 3 or more, then the equation will not be possible because the floor of x minus 2 and the absolute value of x will both be positive. So their product must equal negative 1, x cannot be equal to or greater than 3. Also, if x is less than negative 1, then the magnitude of both the floor of x minus 2 and the absolute value of x will be greater than 1. Thus, the range for x is between negative 1 and 3. Knowing this, we can split the problem into several cases. When x is between negative 1 and 0, the floor of x will simply equal negative 
negative 1. Simplifying, we get that the absolute value of x equals 1 third, so x equals negative 1 third. When x equals 0, we found that 0 equals negative 1, meaning that 0 is not a solution. x is between 0 and 3, we can divide both sides by x to get the floor of x minus 2 equals negative 1 over x. From the range 0 to 1, the floor of x is 0, and so negative 2 equals negative 1 over x. Simplifying, we get x equals 2 1 half. From 1 to 2, the floor of x is 1, and so negative 1 equals negative 1 over x. Simplifying, from 2 to 3, the floor of x is 2, and so 0 equals one, negative 1 over x. There is no solution to this case. Therefore, we only have three solutions being negative 1 third, 1 half, and 1. The answer is negative one third, one half, and one. Just turn it off!